Hawera is the birthplace of one of New Zealand's most popular and best-known novelists, Ronald Hugh Morrison. His darkly comic novels of casual depravity are set in fictitious towns very like Hawera. Hawera's townsfolk didn't much care for the eccentric and alcoholic Morrison. The writer lived in Hawera all his life, sharing the family home with his mother and aunt while teaching music, playing in dance bands and writing short stories and novels. His first novel, Scarecrow, was published in 1963 and enjoyed some success and received good reviews here and in Australia, but his subsequent works gained little further interest. Novelist Morris Shadbolt visited Morrison in Hawera in 1966 and described the man as a Morrison character who was not only inseparable from the environment he wrote about, he was also indistinguishable within it. The bulk of Shadbolt's visit consisted of following the large man around Howard's various pubs and watching Morrison eat large amounts of steak and eggs and drink copious amounts of beer and whiskey. Morrison famously confided to Shadbolt that, I hope I'm not one of those poor buggers who gets discovered when they're dead, yet that is exactly what happened. Following Morrison's early death in 1972, at the age of 50, hastened by his heavy drinking, his manuscripts were published to widespread acclaim. Predicament was published in 1975. It featured a large tower, probably based on Harwood's water tower built in 1914. Predicament was followed by Pallet on the Floor a year later, as well as a new edition of his neglected 1964 novel, Came a Hot Friday. During the 1980s, Morrison's reputation spread as three of his books became films, introducing his parade of small town characters and their misdeeds to much larger audiences. The film version of Came a Hot Friday saw beloved Māori comedian Billy T. James play a cameo role as the Tainuia Kid, known as the Te Whakinga Kid in the original novel. In 1992, when plans were announced to demolish Morrison's home to make way for a fast food outlet, only a handful of friends and supporters rallied to try and save it. The town seemed reluctant to celebrate its association with Morrison. When the house was finally demolished, the Scarecrow Committee of his supporters managed to salvage some items such as doors, a fireplace and the staircase, which have since been incorporated into a cafe and bar in the centre of Hawera called Morrison's. During the 1950s, American youth culture started to spread around the world, largely thanks to vinyl records and portable radios. Elvis Presley, whose early hits cleverly combined blues, gospel and rock music with sex appeal, sent shockwaves around the world. They even reached rural Hawera, where a 12-year-old Kevin Wosley was highly receptive. When I heard Elvis, it was an instant wow. He grabbed me with everything he did, recalled Kevin, whose subsequent life has been shaped by the king. Soon Kevin was dressing like Elvis, imitating his hairstyle, as well as avidly collecting anything associated with his hero. Kevin Wosley's remarkable private museum, the Elvis Presley Memorial Record Room, is located in his garage at 59 Argyle Street in Hawera. A painter and paper hanger by trade, Kevin is happy to discuss his discovery of Elvis and the influence he had on his life. Kevin Wosley and the works of Ronald Hugh Morrison remind us that seemingly bland anonymous streets of small towns like Hawera are often home to fascinating and surprising individuals.